Good morning, Emmanuel family. We are Peter and Irene Duickman. We've been asked to share with you today concerning how COVID is affecting our lives, maybe some of the high points and some of the challenges of living in these unprecedented times. Uh, the first few days when we were starting to get the idea of isolation and quarantine, um, it felt a bit like a free fall. It felt like this has never happened. How can this be? How far will this go? How long will this go? How, how great is the risk? There were so many questions and not a lot of answers. And I found those first, that first little while very disconcerting. Um, and of course, being a person of faith, I turned to prayer. I'm sure we all did. Or most of us did. And I had a little talk with God and I said, okay, so obviously I'm not in charge here. I can't control this. And I like controlling my situation and I can't. So it's all you, God. And I just, I need to give it to you, leave it with you and allow myself to rest in that. And it was, there was an immediate um peace in that in being able to say whatever comes does come and i know that i'm resting safely in the hand of god so that was sort of a, a big moment for me it, it happened early on weeks ago and since then i've been able to remind myself of that moment when things feel a little awkward or a little difficult and use that as my steady point, my northern star through the situation. So on a daily basis, our lives are not so bad. We have a lovely big uh, garden um, with lots of flowers. Everything's blooming right now, it's beautiful. We have a German Shepherd dog, Stella. Very demanding, needs to be walked at least every day once, often twice, so we get a lot of walking and a lot of exercise, which is huge for us. Um, we are both we both need to move physically in the day to feel happy. This year I've been seeding um, small plants for our vegetable garden, so that's been fun. I don't usually do that, but we're sort of newly retired and so we started to explore some options for how to make good things happen and not just get sad. So that was one of the things I chose to do is to seed plants. So we've got our tomatoes out in our little um, collapsible greenhouse. We've got a little covered area outside with our tomato plants and that's giving me joy already now. And soon now the other things will go out into the vegetable patch. Um, other than that, we do a lot of, I, I love cooking and even some baking. And so eating in isn't really a source of big hardship for us because we enjoy food very much and I'm happy to cook. I love making soups and, and salads and, and we really enjoy um, eating in. So not being able to eat out isn't a huge di deal for us. Uh, the, the only thing that really makes me sad, consistently sad, is not being able sp to spend time with our grandchildren. It's been our normal routine mm. to have them here once a week um, or to go there for several hours with Charlotte in the morning while Tammy does yoga. And then in the afternoon, I would pick up Micah after school on Wednesdays and bring him over and he'd stay for supper and we could have our little catch up. And sometimes all the kids, all of the our own children, would join us at supper time and spend the supper hour with us. So that was a source of huge joy for us. And that is probably my most significant loss in this process. But praise God, we've both been healthy. We're doing well, our family is well. Most of our kids are still able to be employed in one way or another, some working from home. Lots of them still going to work every day and they've all been healthy and well. So we feel very, very, uh, simultaneously grateful and sometimes a little still uneasy, but uh, mostly good. We live in a, in a very privileged situation. Uh, as Irene said, we've got a beautiful yard. Uh, personally, we think we live in the best city and the best province and the best country in the world, so uh, we're a little biased, but we've, we've been in Abbotsford for over 20 years now and we, we thoroughly feel it's, it's home and it's very enjoyable. Uh, the ways that we cope, uh, as Irene mentioned, some days are better than others, and it's been a little strange uh, that everybody retired just after I did. Uh, my challenge with the COVID uh, on a personal level is that it's delayed an optional surgery that I was looking forward to uh, regarding my eyesight, and the eyesight is deteriorating. So on a day-to-day -day basis, loss of some of those abilities is, is starting to grate. I love driving, used to love road trips, can't do that right now. On on the plus side and the dreamer side, when we get out of this jail, <laughs> one of the things we're looking forward to, and so we're starting to look now, we have to dream a little bit to keep the hopes up, 
uh, looking for a used Eurovan. Anyone out there? Uh, we're we're looking. So if you get word of anything, uh, we'd certainly be anticipating that someday we'll be able to drive again and be able to use that to see a little bit more of our province and maybe more of the country as well. Um, other than that, I've been kept busy tasks-wise. I've got a challenge with a brother whose uh, financial affairs were in significant disarray, still are. We're catching up, we're, we're working on taxes. So Irene and I are fairly good forensic auditors trying to put together a story with all sorts of missing holes and things and eventually we'll get that caught up. We're, we're hoping to wrap some of that up in the next couple of weeks. So once that job's done, uh, of course, there's always still the church council matters. We've had some council meetings by Zoom. That's a little interesting. And uh, actually, Irene didn't mention, but we've used the Zoom uh, facility for meeting with our kids. We've had dinners, Easter dinner and, and supper this week as well over Zoom. Everybody has their food at their place. We set up a special Charlotte cam <laughs> separate for her from the rest of the family so we could watch her up close and we enjoy that interaction. Um, we also have a large yard, as I said, We've done a little bit of uh, physical distance meeting in our back patio. Bob and John have been over. We have just recently had a little retractable roof installed, maybe not so little, it's actually quite large that we hope to be able to utilize a bigger part of our back patio, which is beautifully south-facing and beautifully hot and sunny if, if it gets that way. So we do need some shade cover there. So once that's all installed, maybe we'll just have to rotate visitors coming over. We can easily keep distance and still enjoy the shade. Um, I've mentioned, yeah, the challenges, the eyesight, certainly a big thing. Um, I, because of that, lost, I, I guess, in essence, my job. Uh, early retirement isn't so bad once you're into it, um, but it, it has changed my life and my, I guess, my focus. So it's a little hard to say, you know, is there something I'm still good at doing? Is there still something that I'm useful for? So the challenge there is to, to keep up the hope that we still need our relationships. That's really the big thing. Uh, the grandkids are special. Anyone who's got kids, if you don't have kids, just being involved with young people, the energy and vibrancy of youth is something that should give us older folks some, some vitality as well. Um, other than day to day, I think, you know, we've, we used to have a schedule that had me seeing 40, 50 people <laughs> relationally a day as patients. Uh, you know, now I see Irene pretty well all the time, although we have our physical distancing at times as well, just yep. to keep sane. <laughs> and then uh, we do miss being able to give people hugs, our, our family, our kids, you know, even good friends. We'd love to embrace them. We haven't been able to celebrate um, Louise's life, right? The passing of my sister-in-law, Louise Duickman, and other families have shared similar challenges. I know Ed Fast our, is a friend, our, our local politician, as you know. His mother passed away recently, and uh, we know that family a little bit as well. So you feel for families like that that have have to adapt to the situation now, and hopefully they'll be able to do some honor and, and be able to uh, recognize the life, an important life. And within our congregation as well, there have been others too. So that's certainly a, a, a hole in our lives. One of the things we do, uh, I guess many people probably do, watch Netflix. Uh, we're not binging too badly, but we do we do like our, our shows on occasion. We've picked up books, Irene's rereading stuff. I got lucky and got to the library just before things shut down and had a few, so they're overdue, but I don't have to pay the fines now. And I've also picked up stuff from the Bookman, so a good series there. One of the other things that I've uh, been into a little bit and I've reread a few times, I have to thank Angelica for this. I'll do what my son Dave did. I'll show you the, the picture of what we're looking at. It's called How We Believe. And it's a document put together by a pastor of a church called Eucharist Church in Hamilton, Ontario. And the idea there, the subtitle, if you can't see it on there, is Unity, Diversity, and One, Two, Threes of Theology. And I have circulated it to church council members. I would love for everyone in Emmanuel to read it and give us some feedback. So if you need a copy, email me or uh, check with Joel. I think he still has one on file digitally as well. Uh, the basic premise there. Can I say something? Sure. We keep saying at Emmanuel we're in a time of transition and we need to find a way to move forward. And this document um, sets out sort of a, a plan for how to move forward in a congregation of extreme diversity. And it was first put into action by this congregation Peter mentioned. And then he, he chose to document it, to share it with other congregations who find themselves in a place where they've got a lot of people with a lot of ideas 
and they need to figure out how to work as a team. And this document actually does a very good um, job of outlining potential ways of doing that. To paraphrase Sam Roberts and the CBC that we listen to a lot, we're all in this together. And so um, on the one hand, the COVID gives us a unified uh, source of adversity, let's say, that we all can figure ways to overcome. And we're doing well at that, I think, as Canadians particularly. And uh, I trust, hopefully, as people at Emmanuel as well, uh, challenges for our larger community that we support, Food Bank, MCC and others in that, we would encourage you to support those. Uh, thanks to those of you who are supporting Emmanuel itself. Uh, we are still getting pretty good donations coming in, different ways of doing that. Uh, not my job to stump on that too much, uh, take Phil's thunder away. But uh, generally speaking, uh, if you've got some time on your hands, this document, How We Believe, is worth a read. Uh, you may find good significant points of agreement. Uh, it certainly will raise some discussions and need be, we could have a future mini-series on it, who knows. Mm -hmm. At this point, I would just like to share, the, the key point really is the unity part. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, that we're all exactly in agreement on everything that we discuss, but rather that we are committed to unity in Christ, that we can work things through. So I'd like to share in closing uh, a verse that was actually our wedding verse. Irene sort of needed a little reminder about that this morning, <laughs> but it's out of Philippians <laughs> that 2. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who knows what happened at your wedding, right? <laughs> Who could remember that long I just ago? said, read it to me. Remind that's right. me. That's, that's re all. Remind me. Okay. We were not fighting. <laughs> no, it was just, which verse was that? Philippians 2 uh, from 1 to 7. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolidation, any consolation from love, there's my eyesight, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born into human likeness. So we have our challenge then to, to em emulate Christ and his love that he showed for everyone. Did you say Philippians 2, 1-7? Philippians 2, 1-7, yes. Sorry about that. Good. Well, thank you very much, Emmanuelites. Hope you uh, have a good start to May. It's, what, six, seven weeks of isolation already for those of you who can't get out too much. Mm -hmm. And so we miss you all. We love you. We wish you could hug everyone That's and right. uh, catch up with everyone in the foyer. So Try to find encouragement from all the little things growing and blooming and sprouting and blossoming because right now that's what reminds us of the gracious love of God and how he just, he's there. He's the same even when things feel weird to us. God does not change. God is still God. He is still in control of what's happening here. We get to come along for the ride. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a good weekend.